All I represent in my confidence. I am the greatest. I cannot lose. I'm pretty. And every man believes he's the greatest. Every man would like to be the greatest. Many want to say this, but they fear it. And they see this in myself, and some hate me for it, and some love me so. Muhammad Ali was born as Cassius Marcellus Clay Jr. on January 17, 1942, in Louisville, Kentucky. He was the eldest of two boys, and his parents, Cassius Marcellus Clay Sr. and Odessa O'Grady Clay. Growing up in the racially segregated South, Ali experienced discrimination and segregation firsthand from a young age. He attended Central High School, where he was known for his charming personality and his talent as a boxer. Everybody has a purpose in life. Everybody has a destiny. And the knowledge of that destiny enables one to fulfill it. See, so everything was put here for purpose. Ants, buzzards, trees. And it's the knowing of that purpose that enables every man to fulfill it. And, uh, and life begins when a person realizes his purpose in life. Very few people uh, know how to go about finding what's the best purpose in their life that they should try to fulfill. And mine was just to be the world heavyweight champion. And then also not only being the champion, but keeping my dignity, my pride, my manhood, not Uncle Tom as, as they say, selling out my people just for the white man's dollar. So this is my purpose, to go down as the one, the first one just about to go all out and all the way and being clean with the sport and, and not representing nothing like tobacco and whiskey and various commercials and stand with my people and representing everybody at the same time, not disowning my own, marrying my own kind and, and socializing with my own kind. But I belong to the world as far as being the champion, but I let it be known that I am black and I will always be black and with black, even if I mean give up all the money and everything that I can be offered from boxing. It was at the age of 12 when Ali's journey as a boxer began. He was introduced to the sport by a Louisville police officer who had seen him fuming over a stolen bike. The officer, Joe Martin, invited Ali to learn boxing at his gym, and the young Cassius quickly fell in love with the sport. Under Martin's guidance, Ali honed his skills as a boxer and became an accomplished amateur fighter. He won six Kentucky Golden Gloves titles, two National Golden Gloves titles, and a gold medal in the light heavyweight division at the 1960 Summer Olympics in Rome, Italy. Despite his success in the ring, Ali faced challenges outside of it. As a black man in the 1950s and 60s, he faced discrimination and racism. He was denied service at restaurants, hotels, and other establishments because of the color of his skin. How do we treat each other? How do we help each other? So. I'm going to dedicate my life to using my name and popularity, helping charities, helping people, uniting people, bring people bumming each other because of religious beliefs. We need somebody in the world to help us make peace. So when I die, if there's a heaven, I want to see it. Because we live how long? 80 years? The odds are everybody in this room, some of you are going to be dead 20 years from now. Some of you are going to be dead 50 years from now. Some are going to be dead 30, and some are going to be dead 60, 70 years ago. We all going to die soon. And if you live to be, say, 125 years old, which we don't do, right? Let's say we live to be 250, and you can have sex for 145 of those years. You're going to come to the end after that. So we don't have it about 80 years on Earth. This is a test to see where will we spend our life in heaven or hell. This is not the life now. Your real self is inside you. Your body gets old. Some of you go to look at the fridge, you don't have no teeth. Your hair is leaving you. Your bodies get tired. But your soul and your spirit never die. That's going to live forever. So your body is just housing your soul and spirit. So God is testing us on how we treat each other, how we live, to see where our real home be in heaven. So this physical stuff don't last for so long. So my car, this building is going to be here when the man who built it dead. There have been many kings and queens of England, they're all dead. After this one is gone, another one will come. So we don't stay here, we're just trustees, we don't own nothing. So what am I saying? The most important thing about life is what's going to happen when you die.
In 1964, at the age of 22, Ali publicly converted to Islam and changed his name to Muhammad Ali although it said he converted years earlier. This decision was a turning point in his life and career. It was also during this time that Ali began to speak out against racial inequality and discrimination, becoming a prominent voice in the civil rights movement. Muhammad Ali's early life was marked by a love of boxing, a passion for justice, and a deep commitment to his faith. It was these early experiences that laid the foundation for his remarkable career as a boxer and his lasting legacy as a cultural icon. What would you like people to think about you when you've gone? I'd like for them to say he took a few cups of love. He took one tablespoon of patience, one teaspoon of generosity, one pint of kindness. He took one quart of laughter, one pinch of concern, and then he mixed willingness with happiness. He added lots of faith and he stirred it up well. Then he spread it over a span of a lifetime and he served it to each and every deserving person he met. I studied life, I studied people, and I'm educated on this. But when it comes to reading and writing, I'm not, I may be illiterate in that. But when it comes to common sense, when it comes to feelings, when it comes to love, compassion, heart for people, then I, I'm rich. Yeah. I wrote something once that says, where is man's wealth? His wealth is in his knowledge. For if his wealth was in the bank and not in his knowledge, then he don't possess it because it's in the bank. You understand? My wealth is in my knowledge. I'm a spokesman for my people, and I'm going to represent my people, and I don't want to be a bad representative. I can't be blind, because the blind lead the blind, and they all fall in the ditch. Now let's dive into his iconic boxing career. After winning a gold medal at the 1960 Olympics, Muhammad Ali turned pro and quickly established himself as one of the most talented boxers in the world. He won his first professional fight against Tony Hunsaker on October 29, 1960, in Louisville, Kentucky. Ali's fighting style was characterized by his quick feet, fast reflexes, and his famous float like a butterfly, sting like a bee approach. He was known for his ability to dance around opponents, avoiding their punches and then striking back with lightning fast jabs and powerful hooks. In 1964, Ali had his first world championship fight against Sonny Liston. Liston was heavily favored to win, but Ali shocked the world by defeating him in seven rounds, becoming the heavyweight champion of the world at the age of 22. In round six, we know that Sonny right foot his stance most of the time. Easy target. Easy. Play with a variety of punches. We call them combinations. Putting punches together. That's his strong point. We're in the middle of round number six. Cassius plays still with the faster hands and the better legs, or at least the faster legs. I'll correct myself on that one. Sonny does have sturdy legs. With slightly less than a minute more in the sixth round, the champion has slowed down a bit. The tempo has slowed in the fight. On 
only 30 seconds to go in the sixth round. Sonny can't seem to slip or knock down that jab effectively. Cassius, Cassius throws it from all angles. Very tricky left lead, left jab. Seconds remaining in the sixth. Joe Lewis, Joe looking in toward the champion's corner. He's still standing up. They're going to make him sit down. I, I think he, he don't see too well out both his eyes now because they're pretty well puffed out. And I think Clay's got all the comfort he needs now. So I think that's, he, he can't even go on winning now. They might be stopping it. That might be all, ladies and gentlemen. Get up there, Joe. Get up there. Get up in the ring. Ali's career was not without controversy. In 1967, he was stripped of his boxing license after refusing to be drafted into the military for the Vietnam War, citing his religious beliefs and opposition to the war. He was also vilified by some for his outspoken views on race and politics. Why should uh, me and other so-called Negroes go 10,000 miles uh, away from home here in America to drop bombs and bullets on other innocent uh, brown people who's never bothered us. And uh, I will say directly, no, I will not go 10,000 miles to uh, help or kill innocent people. Ali was training for an upcoming fight in Illinois. The State Athletic Commission demanded that he apologize for remarks they considered unpatriotic. If he refused, the commission would cancel the fight. What about your unpatriotic remarks that you made? I apologize for saying things to the newspapers that I should have said to the uh, government officials or to draft board rather, I mean to say. I apologize for opening my mouth and saying things that should have been taken up with them and not with just uh, newspaper writers over the telephone. Do you have any questions to ask of the witness? Mr. Clay. Muhammad you, Ali, sir. Mr. Clay. Muhammad Ali, uh, sir. Mr. Muhammad Ali, either yes, one. Just Muhammad Ali. When you appeared before this the fight was canceled. Before, Ali's next four bouts took place outside the United States. When Ali uh, made his, uh, his statement that he was not going to be a party to an unjust war against the Viet Cong, uh, Vietnam, the Viet Cong people, that uh, it was a backlash from the white community. Some of them would call him all times of night, threaten to bomb up his house, they would throw rocks at his house, some of them even drive by in cars hollering and drunk and shooting at his places and different things like that. Mr. Muhammad Ali is from Louisville, Kentucky. Did you know that? Yep. He was born in Louisville, Kentucky. Do you know what's happening in Louisville, Kentucky today? They're marching for open house. They're marching for open occupancy. Now here's a black man who can't live where he wants to live in Kentucky and the hunky is going to send him to Vietnam to fight for freedom. For Vietnam. Well, I think that he's hurting, I think, the morale of a lot of young Negro soldiers over in Vietnam. And the tragedy to me is that Cassius has made millions of dollars off of the American public. And now he's not willing to show his appreciation to a country that is giving him, in my view, a fantastic opportunity, hurts a great number of people. However, Ali's boxing career continued to flourish after his suspension was lifted in 1970. He went on to become a three-time heavyweight champion, defeating fighters like Joe Frazier, George Foreman, and Leon Spinks. Ali's final fight came in 1981 against Trevor Burbick. Although he lost the fight, his legacy as one of the greatest boxers of all time had already been cemented. He retired with a record of 56 wins, 5 losses, and 37 knockouts. I can understand that you're tired of talking boxing because you You've been doing it a long, long time. Does it mean that you're also tired of boxing itself? Oh, naturally. Uh, uh, I've announced my retirement a couple times, and I unretired the next day. 
so I'm not going to do it again, but uh, this very well could be my last time in the rain. This one coming up, but I'm not going to say it is because people have a right not to believe me. But I'll just get out when it's time. But, There's uh, talk today, you see, of you having accepted a fight with Norton next. Is that not true? This way, if they come up with the... Uh, 12 million for me, 4 million for Norton, about 2 million to promote it, so they need about 18 million. Somebody's got to put up 18 million dollars before we go in the ring. And if they do that, I'll fight it. Because for me to get 12, I only keep four. And I have too much to give up. I can beat Norton, but it's always close. And for me to have to go in training for another six months at my age, 36 years old, I beat Norton twice, fought him three times, fought Frazier three times, beat him twice, beat George Foreman, and I've been fighting so long, you know that. So for me to take his old body and to get up, they're gonna have to, it's worth at least four million for me. So to get four, I need to ask 12. And Norton, he wants four, which he deserves. Promotion need two. So they need about uh, uh, 16 million dollars. And if somebody will put up 16 million dollars on the bank, I'll fight. But you keep saying you're you're an old fighter. Well, you're not an old. You're not an old man. You're certainly no, not an old fighter. I see. For athletics, I'm considered the elderly. And see, this body's been going since I was 12. And the average heavyweight out of all the 40 some odd heavyweights we've had, we've had since boxing started. The retiring age is 32. But Jersey yeah. Joe Walker won the title when he was 37. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, the only one. Nobody else. He's just one exception. And. Uh, but I've been going, I'm 36. And it's important to me, to my people, to black people, and all my true fans, that I retire on top. Come in on top, go out on top, and go out with the championship undefeated, and the rest of my life, make movies, do commercials, travel, lecture, whatever I want to do, and I can always live with myself. But staring too long and always have a little mind, I should have quit. So, this is why I want to get out now. Now, say there's a heaven and hell, which I believe. Now, I don't want to go to hell. So, God's judging how to treat people. I, so, I'm going to spend the next rest of my life working for God, working for humanity, doing something. See, God don't care about me being Muhammad Ali, the great champion. God don't care about this BBC television show. He don't care if you're president of ABC, NBC, or CBS. He's going to want to know this, now there's no VIP treatment in heaven. He, God's going to not going to ask you your color, your race, or, but how did you treat people? What did you do? So all I've been doing the next 18 years, I got all the Rolls Royces I want. I got the, one of the prettiest wives in the world. I have money. I've been praised. So what can I do? I'm still not happy. So You're not happy? No. Man chases after everything in the world. He looks for everything that appears to be happiness, but in the end he finds that there's no true happiness except in God, doing something for God. A man help people. So I've been on television, Muhammad Ali beats things. Okay, I'm live all over the world. That don't make me happy. I go get my Rolls Royce, I got a hundred thousand dollars in the pocket, I got it. all I want, I'm not happy. But my little daughter, Hana, or my little baby daughter, Layla, makes me more happy and worth more than me than the world title and all the 50 million dollars I made and that's just a little baby. So the true happiness is in things that really are insignificant. We look at it as being insignificant. In addition to his boxing career, Ali also made a significant impact outside of the ring. He used his fame to raise awareness of important social and political issues, including civil rights, religious freedom, and humanitarian causes. Muhammad Ali's boxing career was marked by his incredible skill, his legendary fights, and his impact on the world both inside and outside of the ring. Do you have a bodyguard? No. You don't? I have one bodyguard. He has no eyes, though he sees. He has no ears, though he hears. He remembers everything with the aid of mind and memory. When he wishes to create a thing, he just orders it to be and it comes into existence. He's the supreme. Now let's explore his political and personal life. 
Ali was known for his outspoken views on race and politics, which often led to controversy. In 1964, he announced his conversion to Islam and changed his name from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali. He also became a vocal supporter of the civil rights movement, speaking out against racism and discrimination. Ali's political activism didn't stop there. He was also an advocate for humanitarian causes, including the fight against hunger and poverty. He traveled to developing countries to raise awareness of these issues and was appointed as a UN Messenger of Peace in 1998. I, Kofi Annan, Secretary General of the United Nations, noting your desire to help focus worldwide attention on the noble aims and objectives enshrined in the UN Charter, Admiring your devotion to the creation of a stable and safer world, the fostering of human rights and the liberation of the human spirit, honoring the fact that you have over the course of your extraordinary career as an athlete and humanitarian, demonstrated time and again your dedication to what is best in humankind, conscious that your example has shown what can be achieved when people of goodwill join together on behalf of a better world and hopeful that through your contributions to sports and human rights, the message of peace, harmony and human dignity will resound throughout the nations. I take great pride and pleasure in proclaiming you, Muhammad Ali, a United Nations Messenger of Peace. You see, you have two ducks flying around the world. That's another duck. <laughs> In his personal life, Ali faced his share of challenges. He was married four times and had nine children. He also struggled with Parkinson's disease later in life, which many believe was caused by his years of boxing. Muhammad Ali may be promoting his film, but in the gymnasium at the Thomas A. Beckett pub in London's Old Kent Road, the only interest was whether he'd fight again. And Ali was at pains to point out there was nothing wrong with his fitness, his brain, or his speech. You know what I'm trying to say? Can you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not talking like I can't talk. I'm not slurring my speech. I'm not talking in a bad way. Do I sound like a man's got brain damage? I gave you a long talk. I'm awful tired. I've been working like hell all year, so I have a right to sound a little tired. But basically, can you understand what I'm saying? Do I sound like a man who don't understand? Do I sound like a man who don't can't think? Plan. You're saying I'm the next champion in the world, Kendrick. Well, I promise you, keep your eyes open and your ears open. Keep writing and watch me come back, knock out a couple bums, do my dance, <laughs> do my shovel. At 30 years old, I'll show you a miracle. At 30 right. years old, I'm going to come back and wipe homes out. Hey! 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 Despite these challenges, Ali remained a beloved figure and a hero to many. He was known for his charisma, his quick wit, and his unwavering commitment to his beliefs. In 2005, Ali was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President George W. Bush for his contributions to American society. He passed away on June 3, 2016, at the age of 74, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire people around the world. This Ramadan, we said goodbye to somebody who was not only uh, a friend uh, to many here, a great American, uh, somebody who I had the great honor to know, um, the greatest, uh, the champ, Muhammad Ali. And uh, as proud of his blackness as he was of his faith, uh, the champ taught us that the most important thing in life is to be ourselves. And so today we are especially honored to be joined by his uh, wonderful wife Lonnie and six of his children. So let's give them a big round of applause. See Ali, this is the only thing about Ali. When you were watching Ali get beaten up as an old man, even that was a young kid, he's not gonna quit, you gotta kill him. He won't quit. Even he's, he was getting beat up every round, getting kicked out of my lab at home. It's a champ, no. Come on, let me out, come on out. They wouldn't stop. He had to be he would have to stay up there and just take the beating like a man. He just, he wouldn't quit. In a way, I respect a guy like that so much. I have so much admiration for a guy like that so much, but it's just not right to do you that way as a human being. Just say it's over, I'll come back and fight another day else. You got me. 
you know. And listen, um, I always like to think I'm a bad, I don't give a, f but um, that's a part of Ali. That's that's where he overshines me because I can't understand a man that's willing to just really die for this, you know. And I talk that, but he, he the real did. Why does it make you emotional? Is it talking about him or the relation to you? Me, me, um, Ali's a giant. There's no way that other fighters can match him. He'll die for this shit. He'll die. I'm not gonna die for that. Muhammad Ali's political and personal life was marked by his courage, his passion, and his commitment to making the world a better place. As we come to the end of this video, let's reflect on the legacy and impact of this legendary boxer. Muhammad Ali's impact on sports, politics, and society as a whole cannot be overstated. He inspired millions with his incredible skill and his unwavering commitment to his beliefs. He broke barriers and shattered stereotypes, paving the way for future generations of athletes and activists. Ali's legacy can be seen in the many honors and awards he received throughout his life, including induction into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. He was also honored with a statue in his hometown of Louisville, Kentucky, and a museum dedicated to his life and legacy. But perhaps Ali's greatest legacy is the impact he had on people's lives. He used his fame to raise awareness of important issues and to inspire others to make a difference in their communities. His legacy continues to inspire people around the world to stand up for what they believe in and to use their voices to create positive change. In conclusion, Muhammad Ali was more than just a boxer. He was an icon, a hero, and a true legend. His impact on the world will be felt for generations to come, and his legacy serves as a reminder that we all have the power to make a difference in the world. You know, I want to say something right here. You all might, this might make you all think. Life is not really long. Let's say the average person 30 years old. If you're 30 years old, you are not but about seven years old. How can I prove it? Out of all the seven, eight, nine hours you slept for 30 years, out of 30 years, out of all the nights, last night when you went to bed and woke up this morning, you don't remember a thing. You've been unconscious for about eight years. If you're 30 years old, you slept about eight years. Okay. How much traveling have you done in 30 years? From the television station to home, to another country, to another city, to school, to church. You've probably traveled two years of your life or spent just getting back and forth to where you're going. So there's eight years of sleeping, two years of traveling, that's 30 years out of your life before you accomplish anything. How long do you sit in school? In America, we stay in school from the first grade to 12th grade. Six hours a day for 12 years, break it down, you sit in a classroom for three years without leaving. Okay, two years of traveling, eight years of sleeping, three years of school. How many movies have you went to? How many wrestling matches? How much entertainment? How many movie theaters, live plays, baseball games? probably two years of entertainment. So by the time a man, you older people know him, bear witness what I'm saying, by the time you have children, by the time you have uh, made a way for your children, by the time you pay for your home, you push pushing 60 years old. So life is real short. My head got big and I started thinking it was my training camp and my boxing ability that kept me where I was at and God punished me and he gave me a good whooping. He broke my jaw in the second fight and he got me whooped and knocked down in the Frazier fight and I realized I wasn't that great after all. So I had to get not only together physically but spiritually. For this fight I've prayed every day for five days, five times a day for the past uh, uh, four months and everything is perfect. And if Allah's with me, it ain't no way no man can win. No way! Because I'm representing God. I'm representing the freedom of black people in America. I want to be the one black man who stands up and look at white people and tell the truth, who don't sell them out, who don't uncle dumb, who don't promote cigarettes, don't promote whiskey, take his fame to uplift his little brother in the ghetto. Never miss. But this is where Ali is trying to make every punch count now. There was no real big betting in this fight and you can understand why.
So now here's the corner men. This is where many fights, of course, are won and lost in the corner. They're applying this ice pack round Patterson's face there. It can't be too badly cut because I don't seem to be using the adrenaline pads on it. But there's a fellow who's really taken a battering in that sixth round. An absolute dollar millionaire, but still... So you can see now that this left eye of Patterson's really is closing in the seventh round. It really is looking a bit grotesque there. And it, although that was a low punch, he actually slipped as he threw that punch. So you may get an apologetic uh, touch there from Patterson. But this uh, armistice will be very short-lived, I think. I haven't seen Patterson damaged like this in any of his fights. He was down 16 times in his two reigns as champion, but he really is being taken apart now. It's becoming a pitiful sight to see such a great fellow and at one time a great champion like this. And the referee warning Ali for pulling Patterson on. But unless Patterson now gets lucky and gets a bit desperate and tries to throw a punch, he really has no chance. I would have thought, obviously, that Patterson has trouble seeing these punches coming. It's bad enough to get out of the way of Ali's fast hitting when you've got two good eyes, but when one is closing, that really is trouble. And it's swelling fast, this injury. I really, I'll be surprised if it goes longer than this round. The referee may leave it to the end of the round. He may let the seconds have another look at it and call the doctor. And that is the desperation stuff now from Patterson. As you would expect, it's more of instinctive retaliation. Well, he still has the pride of not having been knocked off his feet. I'm wondering now whether this really is the last time we shall see Floyd Patterson in a ring. And I think, I suspect there's a little bit of compassion comes there with Ali. He's not, he's not really turning it all on. But on the other hand, he might be doing Patterson a favour if he does. Less than half a minute. So with half a minute to go then, this is the effort now from Ali. I think he wants to take Patterson out. There's no point in him really turning on this brutal punishment. And he's bleeding quite heavily now, and the eyes swelling. And it looks, yes, the doctor's coming up now, and it looks to me as though he cannot allow this very game man to go on in this one-sided fight now. Dr. Edwin Campbell, New York State Athletic Commission there, up in the corner by our commentary position. And I really can't see how he can let this go on. But there you are, the doctor's far more qualified than I am to make that decision. But he's already asking Patterson how he feels about it. Well, obviously, knowing the pride of Patterson, he's not going to quit unless he has to. It's a tense moment now, and Ali's corner looking over to say what is happening. But it looks as though they're going to send him out for the eighth round. No, the referee quite rightly refuses to let this go on. And it just shows you how ignorant can the crowd get. They're quite upset that the referee has stopped this at the start of the eighth round. But I am entirely in agreement with the referee and doctor's opinion there. It really is a bad eye. It was a one-sided battle and one of the great fighters of our time shouldn't be humiliated any farther. So now we'll try and have a word with both winner and loser. It's okay, I didn't get permission.
one of these guys gets recognised. Can I get him, fellas? Thanks.